Welcome back to another episode of Live, Build, Change. Hey, before we get started today, I have a little short announcement for you, and it has to do with the Morning Mindset edition of this podcast. As you know, the Morning Mindset has been going on in the same podcast feed for all of 2017. It's a little five-minute devotional type audio that you can listen to every day to help you get your mind aligned with the truth of God. And the announcement is this, the Morning Mindset is going to continue, but I am giving it its own podcast feed. The reason for that is fairly simple. There is no significant fancy reason for that decision other than the fact that I know many people who listen to The Morning Mindset on a regular basis, but they are not exactly business-oriented people. They're not running their own business. They're not trying to build their own business. And so the main episodes that come out weekly, the longer episodes, really are kind of irrelevant to them. So in that sense, the weekly episode could kind of be a bother to them. It's not really something they're interested in, but they're forced to subscribe to those because both types of shows are in the same podcast feed and vice versa. Could be the same for you. You may be really dialed in on your own morning routine and have a way that works for you to get your mindset aligned with the truth of God And therefore, you don't use the morning mindset. Nevertheless, it's cluttering up your podcast feed because you want the weekly episodes. And so for that simple reason, I'm separating the two out. The morning mindset will have its own feed beginning January 1st of 2018. And you can find it at livebuildchange.com slash morning dash mindset. And that's where you can find the new subscription link, the new way to subscribe. But if you are listening through Facebook Messenger, I'll be able to actually redirect that with no problem. So your subscription through the Facebook Messenger bot should not be affected at all. So that's just some quick housekeeping. Let's get into today's topic. You know, somebody once told me, never make decisions when you're under the cloud. Wait until the sun comes out. And that is great advice. Get some space away from the situation. Live your faith, build your business, and change your world. This is Live, Build, Change. I think it was about a year and a half into my business podcast, Fast Track, that some events happened all kind of right in a row that made me want to quit. I was discouraged. I was down. There were things that had happened that made me doubt myself, my abilities, whether or not I should have started this crazy entrepreneurial journey in the first place. And in particular, the thing that made me want to quit was that I had a client who canceled his subscription to our podcast production and show notes service. Then another one, Then another one, three customers in a row who bailed out just when I thought I'd been doing a really good job for them. To be honest, I saw the first one coming. The business had been growing pretty rapidly and I was scrambling to keep up with a workload, trying to create systems to bring others on to help me out and all of that at the same time. It was during that time frame I'd made a handful of mistakes on that particular client's work. I made the mistakes, not my team, me. It's strange how that happens. All of the mistakes happening on one client's account. I mean, if they'd been spread out over two or three clients, I don't think I would have lost any of them. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment. But that's how it all started. That's how I began wondering if I should quit my business. Then when the second client canceled her subscription and the third one just on the heels of that, you can imagine my state of mind I mean, have you been there before? You're asking all kinds of questions. What am I doing wrong? Maybe I'm no good at this. Maybe I shouldn't have taken on the risk of starting my own business in the first place. And sometimes the worst case scenario you hear in your own mind, this just isn't going to work. I mean, what should you do when you hit that point? And if you haven't hit that point yet, and you are starting a business, you will. I'm pretty certain of it. It's going to come to everyone. So I want to ask in hopefully answer the question here, what do you do when you want to quit your business? The first thing I would say is you need to get some space from the issue. 
I've learned the hard way that I don't make good decisions or good assessments when I'm in the pit of despair, so to speak. You remember that line from The Princess Bride, you know, you're in the pit of despair. You know, I've got to get some space. I've got to get away from the situation for a little while so that I can look at it unemotionally, even eventually dispassionately, because I want to see what's really happened, not what I feel has happened. When I was able to do that in the situation I told you about, here's what I was able to see. Number one, the first client's issues were entirely my fault. I had made mistakes. He lost trust in me and trust is the most valuable thing that I can give to a client. So that was completely understandable that he said, no, thanks. We're going to handle this another way. Okay. Number two, the second client was reorganizing his business and decided that podcasting didn't fit into his plans. Okay, that kind of thing happens in any type of business. There's nothing I can do about that one. Number three, the third client was in the middle of some heavy life issues. There were two deaths in his family within one month. It makes total sense that they were offloading all the non-priority things. Again, nothing I could do about that. You know, somebody once told me, Never make decisions when you're under the cloud. Wait until the sun comes out. And that is great advice. I'm glad I thought clearly enough to do that in this situation. I mean, I would highly recommend it for you too. Get some space away from the situation. Secondly, don't be afraid of the possibility that it could be quitting time. I mean, there's always the possibility that the Lord is using a difficult or discouraging circumstance to redirect you. I mean, I'm learning not to be afraid of that possibility. After all, maybe I'm not cut out to be an entrepreneur or a business owner. Perhaps it's something I was enthused about and excited about, but it really doesn't fit me. Maybe I made a mistake in my initial decision to take on something like this. If I'm going to live a humble life, I've got to be open to those as possibilities. And you know, in the end, if God shows me that I shouldn't be pursuing a certain course of action or a business, then that's a good thing, isn't it? Even if I don't think it is at the time, even if I feel like a failure at the time, there's actually something very admirable about noticing you've made a misstep and then correcting course. And we can always rest assured God's got our best in mind, always. We can rest in that. So in that situation I told you about, I spent some time in prayer And I sought the counsel of spiritually wise people, my wife among them, people that I respect, so that I could determine if the discouragement was a course correction that I needed to heed, like quitting a business, or if it was nothing more than an obstacle or a speed bump that I can learn from and overcome. Prayers for wisdom work. God promises that they do. So don't be afraid of the possibility that it actually could be quitting time. You got to assess that. The third thing, you should go into learning mode. I mean, if I get through steps one and two, and I feel I should remain where I'm at, you know, pursuing the business, then it's time for me to assess what I did to contribute to the problems that occurred. I already mentioned that I'd made mistakes on the first customer service, three mistakes in close succession for that customer. So what do I do with that? Well, I need to own it. There's nothing wrong in admitting that I made a mistake. In fact, you can't move forward until you admit that you've made mistakes. So I had to own those mistakes inwardly and outwardly. I contacted the client. I admitted the mistakes clearly and openly, and I apologized. I told them the steps I was taking to correct the problem, and I asked if there was any way I could continue to provide the service they'd originally hired me for. In that situation, You already know the story. They said, no, thanks. But I did what was right by owning my mistake. Another thing you need to do when you go into learning mode is that you need to consider God's role in the issue. The way that I look at that situation, the one that I just described to you, God's hand was clearly in it. I mean, he could have prevented me from making those three mistakes all on the same client's account. He could have made the mistakes minor instead of major in the client's eyes. He could have retained the client for me even after I made the apologies, but he didn't. And I've got to trust that God knows what he's doing in my business, that he's got great purposes in what has happened. After all, it's his business, not mine. 
I've got to learn to rest in him, even in a disappointment like that. Now, also, when you're in learning mode, you need to pinpoint how the mistakes happened and tweak your procedures or your systems to avoid the same mistakes in the future. In business, making the same mistake repeatedly is inexcusable. It really is. It's inexcusable because you as a service provider, you as a product supplier have committed yourself to deliver on a certain amount of value. If you make a mistake, wonderful. We're all human. We make mistakes, but we learn from those mistakes. And part of what we learn is how to adjust the way we are delivering that good or that service so that that mistake doesn't happen again. You see, I'm not being a good manager or a good steward of the business God has given me if I allow those mistakes to happen over and over. So I make adjustments to the way that I do things. That's my systems, my procedures. I change things. I make checklists. I do things to avoid the same errors happening repeatedly. If needed, I make sure those adjustments are communicated to my entire team so that everyone knows how to avoid that potential problem. In the situation I've described, I was open with my team about my mistakes so that they could learn from them. And that's hard to do as a business owner. But, you know, your team will respect you more for it. Not only does that model the kind of behavior that you want to see in your team, it also builds trust in you as a leader, even though you made a mistake. The fourth thing that you need to do when you experience a business failure or you're tempted to quit is revisit your purposes for being in business in the first place. I mean, it's time to refocus. So, What I did was I spent some time reminding myself why I'm doing this thing called business. Here's my quick bullet point list that I went through. I'm providing for my family. That's a huge responsibility and a massively important thing to me. I'm creating things that will benefit people. And I really do want to help people with whatever I do with the majority of my time. And let's not fool ourselves. If we are working, we spend the majority of our time at that. And it should be something that is benefiting people. I also have the blessing right now to do things in a way that uniquely fits me. I mean, I love that about this business and this pursuit that I'm on, that it uniquely fits me. And that's very fulfilling. So I had to remind myself of that. I also had to remind myself that I'm maintaining a lifestyle of freedom and availability to my family and to my church, to my community, to my friends that I believe God wants me to have. I mean, for example, two weeks ago, our pastor had forgotten that he was going to be gone in two weeks on a Sunday and texted me and asked me if I could fill in in preaching. That was a great opportunity and it was a great freedom to be able to say yes, because I have a business that allows me to structure my life in such a way that I could put in the extra time to do a quality sermon for the church family. That is vitally important to me. And another thing that I had to remind myself was that I'm gleaning experience that can help others so that through this podcast, through my blog, through my life and business coaching and other things, I can pass along the experiences that I'm learning in business. And they're not all going to be pretty and wrapped up neatly with a bow from the Lord. (laughs) Sometimes those lessons come through the hard mistakes we make. You see, I have to remember that once upon a time, I was pumped up about this thing that I call my business. And I remind myself that deep down, even though there's been a discouraging season, I still am encouraged and pumped up about this thing. And then the last thing that I had to do when I was tempted to quit was I had to get to work. I mean, for me, it's vital that I not sit in the discouragement or in the inaction that discouragement spawns. I can't do that for very long. Once I'm convinced that I'm still on the right track, I've got to get moving again. I truly think this is vital. If you don't get moving again quickly, the doubt and the fear and the insecurity has time to creep into your soul further, and it can be devastating the second time around. So in my case, the week after I got the last of those client cancellations, I got busy. I sent out over 250 marketing emails to prospective clients in one week. I dove into the creation of a new mini course that I was making at the time. 
and I started into the final edits on my second novel. In other words, I just got busy. But that brings us to another great question, and that is, what if you don't feel like getting busy? I mean, what if it's extremely hard to get past that discouragement? What if you just feel like you can't? I would say, first of all, pray, asking God for the strength and the motivation that you need. Secondly, believe that he'll answer your prayer. I mean, don't be guilty of what we do so often. We pray something and then we step away from our prayer time and continue to worry and fret about the thing. I mean, if you're asking God to give you the strength that you need to get moving again, Believe he's going to answer that confidently and then begin acting on that belief. In other words, get busy. You see, these discouraging times really are a mindset battle. Did you recognize that from me describing my process in this whole thing? Whether you actually quit your business or not, you have to win the battle over discouragement. As a believer in Christ, you have to learn to overcome those down feelings and thoughts that threaten you because they will derail you. They will suck faith out of you. And depending on your unique past, this battle may be harder for you than it is for other people. But that doesn't matter. Your obstacles are your obstacles. It's still a battle that you have to fight and win. It's a battle that's vital because it has to do with how you think. Perhaps you've heard me talk about this before, but how you think will dictate the course of your life. So you have got to win the battle against discouragement. One battle after another, after another, and you will begin to build the spiritual and emotional muscle you need to get past the wrong beliefs and feelings that tend to hold you back, not just in business, but in life. It's a battle where you cannot give up. You cannot quit. Even if you do decide it's time to throw in the towel on something like a business. So my encouragement to you is this. Grab your Bible right now if you can and fill yourself up with truth. And do that daily if you have to. And most of us do. If you were not subscribed to the morning mindset, that's what the morning mindset is about. It's a daily four and a half, five minute long audio, encouraging you and me with truth from the Bible to fill us up with truth. You can find the morning mindset at livebuildchange.com slash morning dash mindset. And I want you to keep at that daily practice until you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Keep at it. Don't give up. Don't stop. Even when you see the light at the end of the tunnel, the Lord will be there to meet you and to fill you up every day as you meet him. So I want you to consider a few questions. What do you find helpful when you want to quit? What helps you get your head on straight and keep moving? How do you go about assessing your circumstances? How do you determine what to do next and keep going? I would love to hear. You can reach out to me, Carrie, C-A-R-E-Y, at livebuildchange.com. Thanks so much for listening to Live, Build, Change. As a way to say thank you for investing your time in this podcast and the things that are going on at livebuildchange.com, I want to invite you to come to the website and get a free copy of my compilation book called Entrepreneur Mind Hacks. This is a book where I pull together a bunch of hotshot entrepreneurs to give their tips, their mind hacks, their approaches You'll find mindsets, you'll find practical approaches, you'll find productivity tips all inside this full-length book. It's over 200 pages. And like I said, these tips and tricks are from hard-learned experience from entrepreneurs who are really doing the work and have had to overcome the same struggles and mindsets that we all face. You can go right to livebuildchange.com. See, there's a place there where you can enter your email and have the ebook mailed directly to you. It's Entrepreneur Mind Hacks. Go and grab it.